Hi, I'm Wayne Jones. Welcome to Writing and Editing, the podcast for people who deal with words, writers, readers, and listeners, editors and their clients, and anyone interested in the English language. A couple of short announcements before the episode. First is that I'm not doing my usual A Few More Words feature today. I've done a lot of interviews over the past month or so, and I want to get those uh, published first. I still have well over 150,000 words to go in English, so that feature will be back in a week or so. Second is that I was interviewed on another podcast hosted by the guy, his name is Matt Ballacher, that I co-wrote a book with about four years ago now. Uh, the book is a bio of the, stag, the great stand-up comedian, Greg Giraldo. Our topic is, well, that book and a few other things. If you want to listen to or watch it, check out the link in the show notes. So, on to today's episode. My guest today is Diane Hatz. We talk about transitions in one's writing career, not only psychologically, but also technically, as in, should I have my own blog? Should I be on YouTube? Should I stick the Substack only? It's a great chat. This is The Joy and Stress of Writing and Change, episode 187 of the podcast. Hi, Diane. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Wayne. Thanks for having me. I'm really happy to have you here again. It was seven months ago when you were here. And that's that was just a month after, I believe it was a month after your book was published in September, I think, of 20, 2022, and which is a bestseller. And uh, in okay. the intervening... That's a slight, Wayne. That's oh. a slight exaggeration. Oh, it... it okay, go ahead it and tell me... It hit the charts. It hit the charts. But Amazon's charts change every two hours. Oh. So it hit the number one in absurdist fiction. But that's not like you're selling tons of books. That's the reality right. behind all these best selling authors. So right. I'm an award winning author too, because I won like the Indie Bragg medallion. It What's that? <laughs> I don't know, but I still won an award. <laughs> I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot over seven months. Right. I'll, uh, I'll, I've will i got a couple of participant trophies out in my living room. I'll send you one later. For us. Thank you. <laughs> Gold foil would be better because I'm going to yeah. stick it on the book. <laughs> anyway, but you, you made a big, I just wanted to talk about this a little bit because I talked about this, I think, when we first uh, talked uh, about, I mean, you made a big transition, right? You were, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, you were in, you were in New York City, right? 30 yeah. years. Yep. And you, you worked in various aspects of the music industry, business, whatever you want to call it, for most of those three years, if not all of them, not most of them. I only spent 10 years only. I spent 10 years in music, but I spent 25 years in nonprofit food advocacy. I haven't written that book yet. Yeah, that would. Okay. That's, that's my bad there because I didn't realize the proportion was like that. Yeah, food advocacy. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a book for sure. That's mm -hmm. a podcast. Maybe you should be doing your own podcast. <laughs> I might, but it's not going to be on food. Not going to be on food. Okay. <laughs> it's about annoying other podcasters who say you should be doing a podcast on food. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I want to do is I want to do a podcast to build community. I am. Um, we're probably going to get to this, but I just decided to put a blog back on my website. So I went into my email newsletter system and I realized I, I have thousands of emails from previous lists from when I was in food and various things I did. And I'm like, ah, oh, I should probably just delete these. Ah, oh, let me just email to see if anyone wants to stay connected. So I sent an email out and hundreds of people are like, oh my God, so great to hear from you. Didn't know what happened. Yeah, I'd love to stay in touch. And like, I was so moved that anybody cared. Um, so what, and, and, and the, the, the experience and the expertise of a lot of the people, I'm like, I want to start a podcast and interview people who get my email <laughs> newsletter to try to help, you know, promote what they're doing, because I really do believe, and I have listened to some business marketing podcasts and they're saying the same thing with AI, with everything happening, community building community, creating community, being in community is crucial. And it also mm -hmm. goes to the loneliness epidemic and like all social issues we're having. I just think it's really important. And I've, I don't know, it's sort of in my DNA. 
I want to like bring people together around good food. Don't get me wrong. I'm still a food advocate. So I still have that in my blood, but I don't want to focus just on food. I feel like people within a genre only speak to people in that genre or field. Mm -hmm. I want to break through and get different, you know, I want to be the Graham Norton of podcasts. That's oh. a big, that's a big <laughs> seat to fill. <laughs> For those who don't know, I know who he is. Uh, please explain who Graham Norton is. Graham Norton is a British interviewer. He has, he gets anybody to come on his show. I mean, people who have absolutely no personality and no sense of humor and he makes them funny. Yeah. He, I think is the most brilliant interviewer out yeah. there. Yeah. So it's pure I don't want to say fluff because I watch it. Like if I've had a really stressful day, I, I get it on YouTube. I'll turn it on and I just laugh. And yeah. I think that is really important. So I think that a lot of people working on social change, forget that there needs to be light lightness. There needs to be humor. There needs to be fun. There needs to be joy, or we're not going to institute real change. Beating yeah. people over the head with an issue does not work in the long run. That's right, as we've seen many times in human history. Yeah. Uh, and actually, just as you're talking about your blog and your mailing list there, we were, we just, both of us happened to be on a, a, pla a relative, I think of it as relatively new, I don't know, a couple of years old, or maybe it's older. I don't I think know. It's older. Yeah, older than that, called Substack. So people may know, may not, may not know about this, but it's um, basically a, a free uh, a website where writers can go and Put their writings up and they can charge people to um to read their writings on a regular basis or they can give it away for free or whatever and substack make substack makes all the tools available but you were saying a couple uh what's today late last week uh that you were thinking hmm, substack i'm not sure if i want to i'm sorry i'm going to use a cliche put all my eggs in one basket you were talking about reviving your blog and, and I was, I was asking you about that sort of through the comments and just to, just, to, I was just trying to understand it. And partly what I was coming from was from my mindset is always minimalistic. So I always want to, uh, like, I'd be a terrible investor because you're supposed to, you know, invest broadly. I like to just do this kind of thing. Let's put it all on Apple, that kind of thing. Uh, so uh, I was asking about, you know, well, why don't you tell me why um, you're on Substack, you're contributing there, you've got followers and subscribers there. Uh, what is it that uh, in, uh, incited you, if I can use that word, to say, you know what, uh, I think I'll revive the blog or I think I'll have a little look at the mailing list. So I took a branding course for authors and the person who ran it just made a, just a general side comment. And she said, Substack readers read on Substack, medium readers read on medium, and then there's everyone else. And I'm like, oh, I didn't think about that. Like a lot of people are not going to go to Substack to read just to read one stuff. Mm -hmm. They're going to read it where they read it. So that started it. And then there's a writer. He, I think on medium has a hundred thousand followers. And I think that's where I first saw it, but he's also on Substack and has a huge following. He just left one of his newsletters and went to ghost, which I'm not doing. Um, but what he was saying is that Substack, it's not financially viable. They're not making enough money. And I just started getting concerned, like, where's Clubhouse these days? Which was a radio. It was big during the pandemic, but it's lost. Basically, it's following. Mm. So if you were doing your podcast on Clubhouse, then, then you got to switch everything over. But the thing that really clinched it was I just sat and I thought, and I'm like, you know, I have no traffic to my website because the current info that I keep putting up is on Substack. And I need SEO on my website. So when I have other projects and I'm, you know, or let's say I'm trying to get, I don't know, people to do consulting with, it, it's in my best interest to have people going to my website, not to my sub stack. So what I've decided, and I have someone, it's almost done. Like if you go to my website right now, it doesn't look the greatest, but what I've decided, it's called Diane Diggs. So it's Diane Discovers on sub stack, but it's Diane Diggs. So dig into food i don't know if the dig 60s things is too corny but like dig into issues things i dig um, sounds, it sounds really groovy really yeah 
<laughs> that's what I'm worried about. That's what I'm worried about, but I don't give it, I don't care. Um, so everything is going to go on my blog. I will cross post some stuff to Substack and Medium. I've always cross posted from Substack to Medium because I'm just trying to see, like I have not quite as many followers on Medium as Substack, but I have hundreds of followers on both. So with, so Substack has introduced chats and notes. I find them completely and utterly annoying. They, I cannot tell you how much they annoy me. I'm on there to do a newsletter, not to chat and create a new Twitter. Like they're trying to be everything. And I mm. feel like all these programs start doing that. And it's like, why you, you were good at newsletters. So I can't turn off notes unless I unsubscribe. At least that's how it's been for me. And I don't want notes. Like I don't, I, I get no notifications. I don't know how people can like, they, I hear podcasts, you hear the ding, 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 like, can't you turn that dinging off? Like, how do you, why do you need to know when every email comes in? Why do you need to know how many Substack messages you have? Like I get, I'll go in there when I want to go in there. I don't want to see that orange dot. It drives me crazy because I have to click into it. Mm -hmm. So I've unsubscribed from a lot of people I didn't want to because I just, I get so annoyed. So I don't know, you know, I think Substack's an experiment. Um, I think it has a lot of potential. I hope it lasts. I also agree with a lot of people. I do. They have weekly office hours. You've done a couple of them, haven't you? The weekly no, office hours. No, I've never, okay. attend, never, I always see them only after the fact. So I know I haven't, no. Okay. So they have these weekly office hours and every now and then, and it's more like now than then, like more and more people are saying, I feel like, you know, Substack is geared to the people with a hundred, 200, 300,000 following. Well, and obviously they're making more money off those people, but I'm not one of them. So is Substack in my best interest? I don't know. So I'm giving it to the end of the year. Um, I unfortunately am not like you. Like even with my book, I freaking just, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll just do everything. And then I, the, from that way, I'll fail a lot, but I'll learn a lot. And then through what I learn, I can then decide what's best for what I'm doing. Yeah, wow. you know, you make a good point, actually, and I didn't quite catch that when we were just, we just had a brief exchange on on Substack about, um, you know, the different ways of looking at it. But I see your point where um, just because, say, your blog is the starting point for what you want to be your, you know, your main locus, that doesn't mean that you can't feed out to everything else. On the other hand, if Substack is your main locus, then you're kind of limiting yourself because you're only in there because only Substackites are reading that. Uh, yeah, no, that's a, that's a good point. It makes me rethink because uh, I've done blogging in the past. I've really liked blogging and I'm, I'm doing podcasting now, of course. And uh, that's a good point. I might think about it because I'm, um, I'm currently doing a, a thing on, uh, on um, Substack now, but there's no reason that couldn't be something that I'd originate from my own site and whatever post to Substack or whatever, right. however it goes. Right. So. And I just feel like some people have built a big community on Substack and I don't know, Wayne, maybe it's me, but I haven't, you know, like you, you're on Substack. You, I don't think you were when we first. No, talked. I, just recently. Yeah. Right. But you are now. And there's a couple people who I really do like. So I want to stay to see if I can build that a bit, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't have this kumbaya community that I thought I would have. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. And I don't know. You know, it's, it's so hard to read anything. It's so hard to, um, I find it, let me put it this way. I find it so hard to put anything in context, but whenever ever I think of Substack, I think of, uh, you probably know who Matt Taibbi is, right? The journalist. Anyway, there was this journalist. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was I, that was I would call that resounding. If I've ever heard a yes before, that's definitely that was a resounding lie. <laughs> the name sounds familiar, but I don't know who he is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <Cut. laughs> We're gonna have to do this whole thing all over again. No. Graham Norton. Graham Norton. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> But anyway, he he's a huge uh, proponent of, of Substack, 
And he has literally, you know, they tell you he has tens of thousands of followers. And the reason he goes there is because on Twitter, uh, he feels censored. So one of the things he talks about in his journalism is the, you know, taking the term from, uh, is it from LBJ who talked about the military industrial complex? Uh, he calls it the censorship industrial complex uh, among uh, Google and Facebook and Twitter and the government kind of thing. He just but recently, is, sorry, go ahead. Substack, but this is a Substack thing is he brought those hundreds of thousands of people over with him from Twitter. So yeah. he brought a huge audience and that audience, once you get past a certain point, it will just grow naturally, but you have to get over 10,000 or whatever. And yeah. I don't think Substack, I think they had hopes that within the community, Substackers would, but like I, I, I joined all these Substacks. I can't read them all, Wayne. Nobody can. So yeah. I have my feed. So I, lo I lo do love the app. I can choose what to read or not. But I, I hope they, I hope they survive. I just don't know if it's right for me. But see, the thing that you've also skipped over is that the, the traffic and the SEO and the rank, it's ranking. Maybe not SEO. It's the ranking. If no one's going to your website. Yeah, And you have all your blogs on Substack. No one's ever going to go to your website. Right. And I think that is going to be more important because who's to know that they're not going to sell Substack's not going to be sold to Elon Musk in mm. two years, mm -hmm. you know, and yes, we can download all our subscribers and whatever, but just for me, I've just decided, and it's a risk. I want to build my own community. I feel more private. I feel like I can be more me. So things about me railing, you know, the, 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 the change I made, I moved to a city, I'm in New Mexico. I didn't know a soul. I shut down my career. I took up writing, didn't know anything about indie publishing. So I've made such a huge change that there have been a lot, there's been a lot of uh, tears and tissues used, which is just normal. Um, and I would rather share that journey through my blog not going out on a public Substack app. I want people to already be invested in me before I, I share that stuff. I hear you much more now. In fact, you're uh, you're you're really uh, uh, convincing me. I see your point in a certain way, and I'll drop this at just after this last comment. Is that your own website becomes like an old home that you've abandoned because you're 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 now writing in all these these sexy new apartments kind of thing and and you go and you go and there's just tumbleweed at your old home at your old blog home where you used to live yes. right and website not just your blog yeah no higher website's not getting traffic totally yeah no you make a good point definitely yeah yeah uh, so how is the um i wanted to talk a little bit about and i i use I have to use a different adjective now because we were talking in private before. This is a, uh, a sort of a, a, a childish term in a way, but the joy of writing. <laughs> well, what, well, seriously, what I want to talk about is the aesthetic pleasure that comes from putting words together in a way that you're satisfied with. Do you, do you, do you, do you feel that or do you feel it more as a a kind of a chore? Oh, no. Well, hmm, sometimes editing can be a chore, but it's a necessary chore. So I see two distinct things. One is when I'm writing fiction, creative writing. It doesn't happen all the time, but there are times when I click into flow basically that's cliche now, but you click into this and the characters will take over and they will write the book. The high from that, no drug, no spiritual guru, no nothing has ever come close to the feeling. So that high keeps me going during the, gotta do the edit. Like I'm on my third rewrite and the, and the characters aren't quite clicking and it's like, Ugh. but getting through it's like training you know when you're or learning to play the piano you yeah. know, you're training like when you start jogging like you're hurt and you're like i can't can only run a block or whatever um so the joy in writing happens for me and this is fiction after i click into who my characters are it's not even what they're doing because they will write the book 
And that is something I think it opens, I'm, I'm, I have the spiritual thing going on. So I think it opens up something within one and it, and it just opens you up to like a higher consciousness type thing and stuff flows in. So that to me, I, I find, I find writing a spiritual practice. The other thing that I love, so let's say when the book is done or my sub stack, when I write articles, the joy I get is in sharing. It's also terror because when you're being vulnerable and you share it, you're like, oh my God, everyone's going to like hate me and think I'm, they're going to laugh at me. And I'm working through that. And I know you're over that now at your age, but I'm the same age and I'm still working on it, but I'm doing it. So the joy of using my words to help build community is second to none. Some people do it through music. Some people do it on a hike. Some people do it watching a sunset. For me, um, I think one of the greatest joys is like when my book was published, a couple of people who read it, one quit her job. She was so inspired. Another took up writing. She's, I think, in her second rewrite of her first novel. So mm -hmm. it, it, three people, another person was inspired to do writing. So people were inspired. I, I, I don't know much. I don't know what else I could really ask for out of life. Like that to me is a complete satisfying life. So I feel very fortunate that I can do this. Um, so it's the high from my characters, but also the, the connection, the high you get from connecting with another soul on a deeper level. Uh, that's very uh, eloquently and articulately put actually, and very beautifully, if I may say, uh, the, um, yeah, and of course you're right about almost any endeavor in life. Uh, you know, the most enjoyable thing always has some kind of grind about it, right? Or either because uh, a grind is part of achieving it, or because there will day will be days or weeks when uh, it's not it's not singing, you know, kind of thing. It's not happening. Months, so. <laughs> months for me. <laughs> whatever, whatever it might be, right? So, right. It's, and it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. 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 Writing is one of those things. Diane, it's a, uh, you know what? I'm going to, uh, I want, I, I'll, I'll put it down here and say, I'd like to talk to you at least once a year. <laughs> uh, and uh, you, you're, you're a real joy. And I, I, I just, I, let me go, let me go out on a limb and say, I like you. And uh, <gasps> it's, it's good to Someone have you. Someone likes me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's 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 always great to have you and I, I enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed our conversation before we started recording so <laughs> next thanks. time we'll just next time we'll just hit record it, that's right right when I come on and then people will see us raw and four letter four letter exactly, bombing exactly exactly right It'd be like the Nixon tapes or something yeah exactly <laughs> Okay, thanks a lot. Have and thanks for doing this. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Wayne. Bye. And that's all for today. Thanks for listening. Check out the show notes for links and writingediting.ca for more info. My guest on the next episode is Amy Bernstein, and we talk a bit about her own writing and even more about hybrid publishers, those services that are supposed to help you publish your book, but there are some warnings to watch out for. That's on Monday. Please join me.